Widespread disruptions in the global economy are being felt here in Jersey, so much that Senator Bob Menendez proposed a bill to address the supply chain problems caused by the pandemic. The bill would establish a national database of manufacturers to let local companies know who makes what product and hopefully avoid future bottlenecking. Senior political correspondent David Cruz spoke with industry experts and lawmakers at a symposium held here in New Jersey, searching for answers to help identify the root of the problem. They needed a part from China that was on back order for six months and they couldn't fix it. And by the way, that part jumped up in price to like $20,000. Welcome to today's supply chain, that Rube Goldberg-like system of ships and ports and trucks and warehouses that get the stuff you just ordered online delivered to your doorstep. Under the best of circumstances, it's a miracle that it works at all. And you'd be tempted to blame COVID for the clogged arteries, but it's not that simple, said speakers at this symposium presented by the Commerce and Industry Association of New Jersey. COVID did not create supply chain problems, but it kind of um, brought up the weak link, the weak link in the supply chain to be more visible. COVID was the match that, lit, that uh, lit the dynamite. It could have been any number of things. It could have been continued trade war. It could have been issues between China and India. It could have been domestic manufacturing problems. The truth is we've been getting more and more of our stuff from further and further away for some time now. The first Cyber Monday took place over 15 years ago. So the pipeline has been pumping. And yeah, add in a global pandemic, that locks consumers in their homes, and suddenly the seams are stretched. I like to describe this as a series of pipes. The ships could be a 12-inch pipeline. The port and terminal capacity could be a 10-inch pipeline. The trucks could be an 8-inch pipeline. The warehouses could be a 6- or 4-inch pipeline. So the capacity of the overall network goes to the smallest common denominator. And that's how things get backed up all the way to the port terminals where, in California, container ships like these are lined up out at sea by the dozens, sometimes for weeks. That's where that air fryer you ordered is probably sitting right now. Our problems that we're having in all the ports really stem from the inland distribution network not being able to keep up with the flow of goods into the country. There's not enough truck drivers. There's not enough chassis, which are the means of conveyance that you put the containers on. Uh, and because of it, because there's such a backlog, there's a shortage of containers. For state elected officials, admittedly here on a fact-finding mission, there's little that they can do or say about expediting the movement of a container that's been sitting on a dock for two weeks. An expanding warehouse capacity which almost everybody here says is at the root of the problem, is a tricky issue in New Jersey, with some municipalities calling for an end to what they're calling warehouse sprawl. That is an issue that we really have to get a handle on <clears throat> because municipalities are obviously need to have their interests protected, but on the other hand, we also have to deal with the warehouse need. But that is, that is a complicated issue that needs input. Between COVID and, and the uh, infrastructure, and uh, lack of supplies and the, uh, and the conflict we have with China, our manu uh, our, so one of the suppliers there, we just need to uh, have look at these things separately and, 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 uh, and try to resolve them. I think the answer for now is, you know, uh, dig your heels in. We're, we're, there's no end in sight uh, right now to the, this high volume of cargo that we're handling. Um, and I believe that's due in nature to the fact that the virus is still not contained around the world. And when the virus is more under control, um, I believe that the supply chain will begin to normalize again, and then it will go back into um, you know, manageable levels. But that could take years, and whenever it does happen, every link in the supply chain is going to have to be reinforced, from equipment to personnel to warehouse space because this COVID jolt to the system will not be the last. I'm David Cruz, NJ Spotlight News.